Isaac's right. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be missing high and inside to a righty. But also, if I'm driving off the front side, I'm only as strong as my weakest link. So I might have a lot more stress in my shoulder, might have more stress in the elbow. We don't know, right? That's why no one knows exactly why UCL injuries happen, labor injuries happen. People have ideas, they have a good educated guess, but no one knows for sure. Otherwise, they'd be fixed. We wouldn't have these issues, we wouldn't have the highest amount of UCL injury. But what we do know is, if there's a timing issue and you're too far in layback and you're coming forward, you're getting stress on this. So the weakest part of the chain, what's that gonna do? It's gonna break. So when we land, we think a toe to target, upper half, still close at first landing position, not here. We want that forearm angle somewhere between that 25 to 65 degree mark to get minimized arm strength. Does it mean it has to be somewhere right around there? No, it just all the research shows, ASMI will show that it has the, the least amount of uh, damage, the least amount of injury, right? But what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for moving fast, getting into the legs, really driving hard. So, if I'm lifting my leg up, do well, I want to waste injury falling backwards? I don't want to go forwards, I don't want to teeter totter anymore. I want to keep my three anchor points into the mound, into the ground. I'm getting up here, I'm coming set. From this position, leg comes up, moving fast, and I'm trying to get down that mound as hard as I can. I am trying to increase force production. I'm trying to get my stride length as long as possible. So for guys that struggle with this, we're doing 10 reps, you're super set with those sledgehammer swings, correct? So when I go, first couple, I can work my leg lift and break and work on getting into this position. Toe to target, I'm here, I'm still closed. The beauty about the PVC when you're doing these reps is it keeps me closed, it forces that front side to stay closed. Whereas a lot of guys, if I'm going, if I'm going fast, I say, hey, Chaney, move faster down the mountain. What is most likely gonna happen? Yeah, and that's gonna open up the shoulders because you haven't learned to control and separate the upper half from the bottom half. You're training hip shoulder separation, right? That delaying, trying to delay that throw. But we're working on getting fast, down that mat. So your leg comes up, fast up, fast down, hard. Then I combine the two. My heel coming up. This goal's not too, right? So now I'm actually gonna throw. When I throw, scap load position, I'm coming up to the zone, arm action through. We're trying to emulate the arm action as best as possible. What I'm trying to do is teach myself, drive into the bottom half, keep my single leg hinge, butt behind the heel, knee behind the toe. But the beauty about this is you're gonna stress your arm out, no, so I can do hundreds of these reps a week, just like our overhead mid ball throws, and not stress the arm. That's the secret. Because if we could, we'd throw 100 reps a day, we couldn't, we're not gonna have any injury. But you work on increasing your speed, increasing your leg drive, single leg hinge, all these mechanics. You can work on mechanics without actually throwing. That's the secret of doing it consistently. So if you guys are going back and forth, we're gonna have about 10 minute rounds today. You can easily get 50 reps on this, just like that. So again, when we go, and I'm gonna be over here helping you guys, coaching you guys with this, Fast break, getting down that mountain as fast as I can. If you land on the heel first, that's okay. Get to the ball of foot so you can get out over that leg. If you land midfoot to ball of foot optimally, that's gonna help you get down. Okay, 